What's up, my friend? So I've been cooking professionally now for 19 years, and in that time, I've cooked just about every single fancy item you could possibly imagine. And while fancy food definitely has its place, it's not what you're gonna be making after a long, draining day at work. Today, I'm gonna teach you a recipe that's almost unfairly delicious considering just how easy it is to pull off. It's the kind of recipe that every single cook, from beginners to seasoned pros, needs to have in their arsenal. Without any further ado, let's go make some shoyu chicken. Now let's go! Start with a medium sized pot and all you need to do is add one cup of soy sauce. And when it comes to soy sauce, I personally love this Wan Jia Shan brand. I'll put a link for that down in the description. Although I could recommend you use a Hawaiian brand like Aloha soy sauce. I know a lot of people love that one. One thing I learned from my friend Vivian about choosing soy sauce is to swirl the bottle and just see how it sticks to the edges. If you see it's thick and has a little bit of viscosity to it and sticks like that, it means it's pretty good. On another note, I don't want anything to stop you from making this dish. Whatever soy sauce you have in your cabinet, whether it be light soy sauce or just another brand, just use it. Next, add one and a half cups of water. It's as simple as that. Although if you're using light soy sauce, I might just recommend that you add only one cup of water. Now a quarter cup of brown sugar going in. That's dark brown sugar. If you don't have dark brown sugar, you could use light brown sugar. If you don't have that, use white sugar. If you don't have white sugar, you could try honey. You could try agave. You could try maple syrup. You could try monk fruit sweetener. The point is you just need a sweetener, all right? Just look at what you have in your cabinet and use that. The last ingredient I'm adding for the liquids is a little bit of rice vinegar, just one tablespoon. And again, I know a lot of you probably don't have rice vinegar sitting in your cabinet right now you could just use white wine vinegar you could use white vinegar you could use a little bit of lemon juice or you could just leave it out entirely everybody is gonna cook this thing all right everybody's cooking this dish the next items we're gonna be adding are called aromatics aromatics are simply just vegetables or herbs that add a strong flavor and aroma to your dish for today I've got ginger garlic and green onions for the ginger I'm starting with a piece that's a little bit bigger than my thumb but a thumb sized piece of ginger will be fine I know what you're thinking Sonny Wow that's a big thumb. That's like a thumb Shrek would have. Why is it not, why is that not, why isn't it green? An amazing trick I've learned for peeling ginger is not to use a knife or a peeler, but something blunt, like a spoon is what I use. Works perfectly to peel that skin. You could use a butter knife or something else, but as you can see how this is just shredding away like effortlessly, really works extremely well. If you use a peeler or a knife, you tend to waste too much of the ginger. Spoon gets it off so nicely. Now we just need to slice this ginger into slivers. And to make this safer, I like to first take off a few little slivers from one edge so I can then flip it on its side. Now it's sitting really stable. And from here, I'll make the rest of my slices just like so. And again, when I get to the very end, flip again. And from here, we'll just slice through. With the garlic, I take my knife and I just give a little tap which makes it really easy to remove that whole clove from there I'll just take off that little woody bit at the end and it's completely done peeled and ready to go for the spring onions I like to lay them out tip of the knife down I got my knuckle here on the back and just whoop, pull through to take those tops off turn it around same thing over here tops and bottoms from there I'll just slice these directly in half like so simply just add all of your aromatics into your soy broth that's five cloves of garlic and five to seven spring onions it depends on their size I did seven the name of the dish is show you chicken show you chicken so let's talk about the cut we're gonna use I'm using bone in skin on thighs some divine culinary magic takes place when you cook meat on the bone I'm a big believer in it however if you want to use boneless skinless thighs you could absolutely do that too you could use whole legs you could use drumsticks you could even do wings like this I would avoid using breasts because they tend to dry out a little bit but the rest of the chicken is good to go and all I need to do with my thighs here is just remove some of this excess fat it just doesn't look good to me I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit again you could skip this if you want but it does make it look nicer for presentation. Something just like that looks perfect to me. My friends, a quick pause in the video today to bring up a quite serious subject. Seeing as how shoyu chicken is a Hawaiian dish, I thought this would be a good opportunity to raise some money for the good people of Maui. As all of you must know by now, the island has suffered from some devastating fires. So down in the description, there will be a link to three local charities. Maui United Way that provides overall fire disaster relief. The Maui Food Bank, which is getting food to all the people there that need it. And the Maui Humane Society that is helping any displaced animals after after the fire. I'll personally donate what I can and if you have any extra money you could share even if it's just five dollars it's really the energy behind giving that counts. I really hope we can use this channel to do some good and now let's get back to the recipe. There are a ton of variations you can make when it comes to shoyu chicken. A lot of people like to spice it up a bit with some chili flakes or even some fresh chili so feel free to do that if you want. Although I'm just going for the base recipe today as this is a dish for new cooks. I like to start my chicken in here skin side down. I know a lot of you were thinking it didn't look like a lot of liquid but as you put the chicken in it's 
gonna volumize everything, right? You can see now how much space has been created. I might just pull some of those aromatics so they're floating on top of the chicken a little bit like this. And also as that chicken cooks, it's gonna release juices and fat into this liquid too. It's a beautiful thing. Please feel no pressure to do this next part, but if you have the foresight, making this the day before and then leaving it to marinate for 24 hours covered in the fridge before cooking it can only do it a lot of good, but it is not necessary, so do not worry about it. Now let's set our chicken on the stove and I'm gonna turn the heat on to just about medium. We wanna bring this to a light, gentle simmer. Whenever you're cooking meat in liquid like this, you never want a rolling boil. You want a gentle simmer, which in the end is just gonna give you a much more tender result. If you look around the edges of the pot right now, this is what a gentle simmer looks like. So from here, I'm gonna turn down the heat just a touch over low to maintain that. And then I like to put a cracked lid on, so I'm not fully covered like this, but just off to the side slightly like that so it can breathe a little bit, but while also trapping some of the heat and steam. At this point, I'll start a timer for 30 minutes exactly, and while that's cooking, you can go and just play like a nice chill game of ping pong with your cameraman, Marcus. After 15 minutes, what I like to do is take the lid off and just flip the chicken now so it's skin side up. And as you can see now, it's just stained with the soy sauce, which is a beautiful look. From here, we'll pop the lid back on, cracked again, and we'll cook for another 15 minutes for a total of 30 minutes. Here we are after 30 minutes. And what I like to do now, you don't have to do this, but I do temp the chicken. It's hitting right around 180, which is I think perfect for chicken thighs. Unlike breasts that are better pulled at a lower temperature, when you take chicken thighs a little bit further, they just get really tender. Now when it's done, kill the heat and just let it sit in the stock that it cooked in for at least 30 minutes. A big mistake I personally see people making when they cook meat in liquid like this or braise it is they pull it out as soon as it's done and if you do that it tends to dry out a lot. Letting it sit in that stock and rest is a pro tip that makes it literally five times better. Don't forget it. My friends for the last year I have been working hard on a digital book. Master in the Making is an ebook that contains 55 carefully selected winning recipes. I'm truly proud of how this book turned out so if you're ready to take the fast track to culinary success just click Click the link down in the description to learn more. Now let's get back to the video. Now you can't make sure you chicken without making rice to go with it. And I know what you're thinking, Sonny, that rice cooker looks pretty advanced. And it is. However, the theme today is no man left behind, so we won't be using this. All you're gonna need is one of these. Long before I ever had a rice cooker, I was using this technique. It has never failed me. Start by adding two cups of rice to whatever kind of pot you have. Honestly, one that's a little bit smaller than this would be ideal, but this will work just fine. And what you wanna do is rinse this rice with cold water about three times to remove that excess starch. I like to first just put a tiny bit of water with the rice and then very gently with my fingertips I mix that releases the starch on the edge of the rice. And then I fill with more water, discard, and then repeat. Now all I have in here is the washed rice and the ratio I like to use is one cup of rice to one and a half cups of water. So here I have two cups of rice. I would do three cups of water although I like to go just a little bit less than that. I think the less water you can get away with the better. But I'm going to teach you another pro trick right here in a second. So let's just put in the water. On another note make sure there's no pieces of rice stuck to the edge of this pot. You don't want that either. Give it a little bit of a shake to even that water out. And what I'm looking for here is that the water is a nail's length above the rice. And I know that may seem weird to a lot of you, like how does that work? But it actually does. A lot of people say measure water just to the first knuckle, but I like going less, which is just about the nail. Now pop a lid on it, turn the heat first onto high. As soon as it comes through a boil, and you can tell because you see all the steam coming out from around this edge right here, it took about four minutes only. I'm going to reduce the heat now all the way down to low, all the way to low. And you're going to start a 10 minute timer. Don't touch it, don't open it, don't peek at it, don't think about it, okay? Leave it alone, low heat. When your time has elapsed, put your phone down, turn the heat off, and do not touch that lid. And now start another 10 minute timer. The heat is off and what's happening now is the rice is steaming and finishing cooking inside this pot. There's still a lot of heat in there. And once that timer goes off, your rice should be absolutely done. Let's take a look at it. Looks really nice to me. The true test is whether or not it's stuck to the bottom, right? Let's have a look. Seems to be coming out very easily. This is great. Haven't done this technique in a while because I have the rice cooker, but it looks great. Works every time. I'll give that little mix. I'll cover it up again until I'm ready to use it and it's gonna be perfect and ready to go. Once your 30 minutes is up, I'm gonna pull out my thighs straight onto a little plate here on the side. And we just have two more things to do before we're ready to eat. First thing I'm gonna do is get out all these aromatics. Just squeezing them through here a little bit. Make sure I get any of that delicious juice out. And the garlic. Ooh 
Marcus, come try this. Try that garlic, dude. That's fire. You like it? He likes it. The first thing we need to do is thicken up that sauce because it's too loose right now. It's watery, right? To do that, I'm gonna take one tablespoon of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. And I like to just mix it in with my finger like so. And that creates a slurry, which is gonna thicken our sauce and make it nice and shiny as well. Let me show you how to do it. I'm gonna turn my sauce on the medium high and we need to first bring this to a boil. Once that boil is achieved, make sure you remix your little slurry here a little bit because that cornstarch will fall to the bottom. We're gonna start adding it little by little. I may not need all of this. It really depends how thick you like your sauce. What you need to know about using these slurries is that once you add it, it's gonna stop the boil pretty much. You need to bring that mixture back to a bowl to see how thick it got. So still need more here, a little more. Turn the heat down now a little bit. Let's see how thick this is. Sometimes it's good to just put it on a spoon, give it a little pour, or flip the spoon over, brush your finger through and just see how thick it is. I think we can even go a little bit thicker to add a little more. And again, it's just preference. If you like it thicker, you might wanna do like two tablespoons. I don't like my sauces too thick. Let's see how that looks with another teaspoon. Wow, it looks really good. Look how beautiful that sauce is. Okay, that looks perfectly thick to me. That was a tablespoon plus one teaspoon. I'm gonna shut the heat off now. At this point, you can just drop the chicken straight back into the sauce. However, I'm gonna show you one last trick. That's really easy. I'm gonna throw my chicken skin side up into a pan and I'm gonna place it eight inches away from a high heat broiler. And after just about three, four minutes of broiling, you'll just have achieved this nice little texture on the skin. Just a slight little bit of crunch and color that gives it a little bit more flavor and texture. It's a nice little trick. From here, I'll drop my chicken back into that now thick sauce and just let it chill out while we plate the food. Right. Marcus, let's try this thing. Hell yeah. You do the honors. I mean, you did all the, you did all the work, so. I deserve it. He deserves it. Me. Yeah, sure. You gotta give it up to recipes that are that easy, that cheap, and that delicious. I mean, I, 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 there's a real beauty to it. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't know who you are watching right now, but I sincerely hope you got some really good tips out of this video, and I would love to be your cooking teacher. And again, if you have anything to donate to the good people of Maui, it would mean the world to them right now. They really need our help. If you wanna keep learning today, here are two more recipes that are perfect for beginners. And down in the description, there are links for tools and equipment that I love to use here on this channel. And obviously, as I said earlier, you can get the new cookbook to have an incredible resource at your fingertips. Until next time, you know I love you and I'm out.